As I mostly climbed out of my smartphone game hole from last month, February proved to be a good time for getting back on track, as I dove a little into most of the releases I wanted to, even if one of my staples got left behind. I finished my Game of the Year video, which is out now, played a re-release or two of the games that got me into a certain Lawfield series, and continued at one of the staples that I'm trying to keep to, even if it was mostly thanks to its limited time events. I feel much more satisfied with my gaming time since February, as I'm happy to be playing more things. So with that, here are the the JRPGs I played in February. While it just came out right when I was finishing my Game of the Year video for 2023 that I'm grateful many of you watched, when I was done, I had about an hour left of February and a copy of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth waiting for me, so I took that final February time to get to that, even if just a little. In true cinematic Square Enix style, I was glad I did, as it was a gorgeous experience that moved me in its first moments. A slight downside of that is that I don't want to spoil that opening for anyone, and also I haven't played much beyond it, so I probably won't have much gameplay to show here. But but it did manage to be gorgeous in a short amount of time and made me glad I took the time to play Crisis Core Reunion and the first remake as it really gets right into connecting the stories, which is all I'll say. Also, since I've mostly been in Resolary on a smartphone game land for a bit, seeing the gorgeous console quality in such a good form was wonderful, and I'm excited to eat up more of that as I continue playing soon. I hope you guys are enjoying it too, and I'm hoping it lives up to the 10 out of 10s I've given to both these new school versions of Final Fantasy VII so far. As usual, I'll be sure to talk about it more soon as I get prepared to put plenty of time into what is hopefully another gorgeous remake of a classic story for new fans like myself and old to appreciate. I did mention last month that I was hoping to get a whole video done about Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4's PS5 re-releases, but the way the cookie crumbled in February for me was that I spent most of my time off to making JRPGs I played in January on my Game of the Year video that left no time for others. I did have some time to actually squeeze in a little bit of both to see how they look and feel on PS5 though, and while I didn't have time to test all the costumes that I will no doubt be putting on my characters if I ever play through these games again in full, the smooth and snappy load times on PS5 were were something I couldn't help but appreciate, especially with 4's opening being even more exciting to me as I know that SSS way better after my time in Crossfell. That experience with the opening of 4 has made me realize that it might actually be fun to mess around in these worlds someday again in the future, feeling smoother than ever on PS5 with load times feeling that little bit faster and things feeling a little sharper, even if they maybe do emphasize the slightly older graphic feeling of its models. I wonder if the thinking behind this re-release is not just for those who haven't tried it, but also for those like my Myself, who have spent more time since Cold Steel jumping back into the series who can get even more out of these titles now. Either way, I definitely recommend these two games for two fantastic JRPG stories that I'm sure will be made even better if we can see the first two Cold Steel games hit PS5 eventually. I'd love to hear if this is the way any of you guys will try this game for the first time, or if any of you picked it up for the nostalgia or your collections, and mainly, I hope more people try this big but rewarding series as we wait for the next edition later this year. In terms of the two games I've been trying to stick with, one of them went much better than the other thanks to its events involving time limits and being in my pocket, although I definitely had good intentions with the other that I hope to act more on this month. The game that fell behind was Trails to Azure that I unfortunately didn't get to at all in February, unfortunately. I don't feel daunted by it, but I am also pretty sure I'm about to end chapter 2 that I think will lead to another hour-long cutscene that I've been trying to find the sit-down time for to get the most out of it, yet all that time I ended up giving to other things, whether that be to making videos or the other games in this video. I think I'm more than likely to get that sit down time as soon as this week though, so hopefully I get back on track in March and can report back about that next month with good things to tell. As for my Revs Luriana time, the daily nature of it has meant I've had no problem getting time in. However, my habits with it are much, much better now that the stamina bank in the Japanese version has made me compartmentalize my time with it a little better. I try to only log in after the second pie is available now to save myself logging in twice, and before that, I also try to make sure I've gotten whatever I want to get done with videos and general life things before, as I really can just rush out my dailies if I need to, which I've done on multiple occasions. As for the actual content side of it, I was up to date on the Japanese server until a big chapter 9 drop last week. I also really enjoyed its Arlen Winter event, where I managed to get both Winter Rorona and Totori for free, which I was pretty happy about, as I loved them in their games. For the English side of things, I finally finished chapter 3 in order to break the level cap, and that chapter hit just as 
as well in English in my opinion. I'm currently slowly but surely enjoying its Dragon Quest style event too that I may end up speedrunning through on its final day, but again, it's necessary to balance life and my play with Res, which will be essential if the hints of a new console Atelier coming soon are true. Hopefully I'll have more Trails progress to speak of in the next month, and in a slow daily way, I hope to keep making progress on both my Res accounts too. I look forward to giving more updates on these gaming projects of my next month just as much as I look forward to getting back into both very soon. March is here, and with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth just out, things are seemingly quiet as many of us work through it. There are a couple of things coming out in the West in March though, and I hope to get my hands on both in ways both big and small. The recent Nintendo Direct got me keen on Unicorn Overlord for the first time, even if mostly just for its gorgeous food. The demo is out now before the full game comes out on the 8th, so before or after that time, I'll be happy to give the game a proper look to see what it's all about, and since it seems to be a popular pick for the month, I hope to hear what you guys think of it as well. The other game I'm definitely keen to try is The Legend of Legacy, which I've talked about on here before. I played the Alliance Live HD back in 2019 and found it challenging but rewarding, so I find The Legend of Legacy exciting and intimidating for the same reasons. Looking at my calendar between its 22nd release and April's offerings though, if I get through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth quickly enough, there might be a good amount of time to get through it and see what this inspiration to the Alliance Alive is really like, so I'll be sure to report back my thoughts on it as I hopefully get to give it some time this month. Aside from that, I'll be sticking with my staples, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and just generally looking forward to having a lot of fun with this good little genre as usual. I hope you're all happy, healthy, and playing lots of things, and I'm excited to hear what you're playing as we continue in another month of hopefully great things to play. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in February and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media on X, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!